Welcome to Pause the Page. I'm Ashley. I'm Stephanie. And I'm Katie. And today we will be discussing Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. Yay! (laughs) So before we get started in our podcast, let's go over some book news. Have y'all heard any updates recently in the book world? I have... But I guess it's also more for um, the movie world as well. Well, TV show. Um, Percy Jackson. They finally released the the official trailer for the show. And I'm super excited. That's Yay. exciting. Have y'all seen it yet, the trailer? Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> I know I texted y'all. I bombarded y'all that day. I'm so sorry. I was so excited. The trailer looks really cool, and I've never read the books, but I'm excited for it. It looks fun. It does. Um, I I saw the trailer, and it looks exactly like the book, and I am so excited to see that. Um, Because I don't know if y'all know, if y'all remember, there are some horrible movies made. (laughs) Oh, they're bad. They're terrible. They're horrible. I don't even want to talk about them. We're not going to talk about them on this podcast. They don't exist. We'll talk about the new stuff when it comes out. Yes. <laughs> and um, But the, the trailer looks so good. And they're actually the correct ages. All the characters are going to be the correct ages. And I'm super happy Ooh. to see that, that they did that. That will be nice. And I think that makes sure it focuses more on the plot than yes. a movie version of a plot. <laughs> yes. And the good thing is Rick Riordan, the author, he actually was a part of the writing, the scripting, the producing, all of it. He was a part of all of it. And this is going to be on Disney+. Plus. This will oh, give so me they a good excuse money. to get Disney+, Plus now. There you go. There you <laughs> go. And that means Disney's got money, so you know it's going to be good quality. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm so excited. Well, and the, you know, it's, it's got to be good when the author seems genuinely happy with the outcome, mm-hmm. you know? Oh, yeah, have y'all that. have y'all seen any of the hate the author gives on, on the movies? No. It's the funniest <laughs> thing. He's the number one fan to hate the movies. And he is not shy about it. Well, as he should. Uh, one more thing I think I heard, or at least it's a theory, is that the production for A Court of Thorns and Roses may have stopped. That's Did y'all right. hear about that? Yeah. yeah. That doesn't yeah. fully surprise me. Yeah, yeah, same. I'm not I'm not super mad about it because Hulu was the one that had it. We, yeah. yeah, and we have talked before that Hulu was not the company that it should have gone with. And that No, not to do a good job. Yes, correct. <laughs> 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 oh my god people expected too many things about certain people in that book i'm just saying yeah but in a way i'm kind of glad that they're not gonna go through with it because although i was happy that they were making it i also wasn't super excited because they're gonna ruin it like some some aspect of it is not gonna be yeah. to the level of my expectation and my imagination mm. yeah well it, would, it should be a series but if something's going to be turned of hers, I wish uh, Throne of Glass would be oh. made by, like, HBO. I... Oh, I love oh, it. Uh, Throne of Glass, yes. Katie! <gasps> <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> Y'all, the, the fact that it's eight books long is very intimidating right now. <laughs> I just don't have the attention span. And I know people are like, well, you can read other books in between and take breaks. Not my brain. No, no. My brain needs to finish. (laughs) And I just, it's a lot of books right now. (laughs) I I have a confession, too. I haven't actually read the last half of Kingdom of Ash. I just don't want it to end. I do that with all my books. Like, I just won't finish the last book. I think for me, it was more just like I... I, I, for some reason, I think life got in the way and I never finished it and, or like I stopped and then I never Mm -hmm. finished it. So I don't know how it truly ends, but I was on the very last book. I've heard the very last one will wreck you. 
I, I've I've been spoiled by that. it on book talk. So <gasps> Don't I know, tell me. Like the, okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. How have you not had it spoiled yet? I think I've heard, but I don't accept. <laughs> <laughs> and so in my brain, it doesn't exist. Like, I, I don't know the ending. That's fair. See, I, I'm pretty sure I've been spoiled, but be, because I've never read the books and I don't know the order, I don't know what I have been spoiled on yet, if that makes sense. Right. Like, I'm sure I'll read the books and be like, oh, this makes sense now. <laughs> I now I, understand I... the upset. <laughs> Uh, I'm scared now. Katie, you're making me nervous. <laughs> it's Sarah J. Mass. I don't know why you expect anything less. <laughs> because it's the last one, so it has to end happy. Is it, though? Didn't she do an interview where she was like, is it? Is it the end? I think that means they're just going to come back in Crescent City 3. But Not... I agree. I hope so. But I actually wouldn't want it for three. I would probably want it, like, if there's a fourth. I don't because... think she's writing a fourth. I think she's really stopping uh, Crescent City with this third one. Are you serious? What? No. Based on her, no, based on her interviews. SJM of her. Yeah. But based on her interviews, it really feels like she's like, no, no, this is kind of where Crescent City's coming to an end. And she's really excited about writing the next Akatar book. I I'm feel really like Akatar became her big baby. Akatar book. Yeah. I want, I need um, Elaine. It's going to be Elaine, isn't it? It's going to be Elaine. It I'm so excited. Yes. I need to know things. And I, I'm, we all know there's something going on in her head that we, we need Absolutely. On. I am done with her slander. Everybody yes. is hating on her. I love her. I like Have her. I love the her. Have you theory that she's adopted? No. No. Um, is it her that's adopted? I think it's the, the theory because, like, Nesta and Feyre look similar but elaine doesn't and so there's like this really wild what? fandom mm, theory no i don't agree look I'm i don't believe that the, the no way that i well i i, I, well, I didn't say it was, <laughs> was it justified I, was it justified did they have receipts <laughs> I have to go back and find y'all. It was somewhere Listen, on TikTok. Did it, it was one of those people who had like the spider web, and they're like, "Wait a minute, wait a minute. This is why she's different." And I was like, "Okay, sure, sounds great. I don't know." <laughs> oh, go watch. Um, Happy Hermit. I think is still her. Happy uh, Hermit. Yeah. Is she the one that's like she she does it like a Bible passage? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> what do you mean, like a Bible passage? Oh, I'll send it. I'll send it to you. Yeah, it's please do. He holds up a guitar like a Bible. Is like, please turn your page to. <laughs> <laughs> it's the funniest thing though. And her stuff is marked up. Like if you see the edges <gasps> of her book, this woman is deep diving into everything. <laughs> oh my god. No, I love reading unhinged uh, theories of Akatar, though. They, they make me giggle. All right, let's start with the, the, the episode. Let's get going. All right, all right. So, okay, now on to Red, White, and Royal Blue. Uh, this book is an LGBTQ plus romance novel about Alex Claremont Diaz. Uh, he's the 21-year-old son of the first female president who falls in love with the Prince of Wales. Uh, the movie is rated R, and I would personally recommend the book to, like, high school and up. I mean, I was reading that kind of stuff when I was in middle school, but... <gasps> <laughs> Discretion advice. <laughs> Does Twilight count? Because, I mean, I read that no, in, in Twilight. No, Twilight does not count. No, <laughs> no not... not, not... Twilight the beginning, but like Breaking Dawn. No. no okay, I so. then I was not reading that in middle school. That was a fade to black. Was it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I oh, I don't so. remember that. Yeah. So, okay, Alex is a handsome, charismatic uh, guy with his mother as the first female president. He's basically like the American equivalent of royalty. And then in the book, there's Alex, his sister June, and their friend Nora, who's the vice president's granddaughter. And they attend a royal wedding. And while there, Alex has a run-in with Prince Henry, uh, who he has despised for years. Um, and then the run-in, they knock over this really, really expensive cake, and it becomes a PR nightmare. So... 
A plan is devised for damage control where they stage a friendship between the two rivals and then soon the fake friendship develops into something more and then Henry's invited to a New Year's Eve party uh, at the White House where Henry gets jealous and kisses Alex. And then Henry tells him he's gay and Alex realizes he is bi. Um, so shenanigans ensue and then their relationship is made public. Uh, they have private emails that are leaked. And isn't that where Henry breaks up with Alex? I know it's towards the end. I think it's before. Is it before that? It's before, and then they kind of get back together, and they think all is well, and then the emails happen, and then there's silence, and they're not allowed to talk to each other. For a right, minute. right, right. But in and the then... movie, I think it's when they lined up the breakup. So they so they break up, the, the emails are leaked, and then Alex travels to London, um, and then in the book, the queen is unsupportive of the non-traditional relationship, um, but the crowd outside the palace are, like, shouting their support. And so we move on from there. We go to the election night where it comes down to Texas, um, and then Texas is turned blue, and that's pretty much the end of the book, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think it's I think a fairly a faithful adaption for a two hour. Movie. Yeah. Yeah. It's not bad for the time that they is. allotted. Yeah. Correct. I feel like if you watch the movie, you, you have understood the full book. Like you, you know, I feel cause like it's not one, it's not one of those movies. It's not one of those movies that was totally different or, or it wasn't bad. It was actually a good, a good adaptation of it. It wasn't terrible, but I do feel like there was a couple things left out. Like, the emails weren't really brought up in the movie at all, but they were the main plot line for what went awry. So if you didn't read the book, you may have been confused a little bit there. Um, but also, the entire ending was... <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there. <laughs> um, so, a big difference that... The biggest difference I did not like that they didn't put in the movie was that there was no White House trio. They got rid yes. of June's character. And she was such a big part of the book. It was really disappointing to not see her in the movie. I loved the trio. And I yeah, their like relationship was my favorite, I think. For sure. And it was a real sibling relationship. Like, if you have siblings, the things that Alex and June would do to each other, you're like, yep, yep, they're brother and sister. That's legit. <laughs> um, but I also feel like they took June's, like, the major points that June had and then split them into things Alex experienced or things Nora experienced. And then they didn't even give Nora, like, a solid point. She existed for what one scene and to be a real side character and she has a lot more than that in the <laughs> yeah book. she was not mm -hmm. utilized enough mm -hmm. neither was pez i was kind of disappointed that pez just appeared randomly throughout the movie if you were paying attention who's pez henry's best friend <laughs> <laughs> oh black guy that's his name hair. yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> that's right that's how underutilized you <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> thank you for nailing my point <laughs> I just forgot his name <laughs> I loved the in the beginning of the movie I loved the um, the way they did visually the, the text messages yes that was fun I liked that, that was cool. so fun and like how they looked like they were lying down next to each other or whatever yeah yeah, I that thought was that good. was cute. Super cute. I loved it. I thought they did a good job there. One and thing then as I... soon as they hang up, they disappear. Yes. that was... Yeah. That's what I really liked, like how they were almost in the same room. Or there was one where they like transitioned to him being on the phone. Mm. Am I thinking of that correctly? I thought there was one where they transitioned and then like all of a sudden his audio changed to like being on the phone format. And I was like, I like that. That's that was nice. That was I cool. think you're right. I think you're right. I'm trying to remember correctly. <laughs> um, that being said, again, the emails, I, if they could do that with texting, I really wish they had done that with the emails because the emails were one of the fa my favorite parts of the book because it was a modern day love letter back and forth. Yeah, and, and they I could have that. done it the exact same way. Because mm -hmm. I think they mentioned the emails towards the end, but we don't see in it any emails exchanged. It's all yep. text message in the movie. Mm-hmm. Or phone call. 
And I don't know if there was a reason behind that, if it was just easier. Like, to make it just text messages, but then why use the term email later? I wonder if they did it for, like, a modernism of, like, oh, they're young they're young kids. They don't do they emails. Don't email. I don't know. Maybe. I wonder if that's... was published in 2019. Like, it's not like oh, it's true. an old book. <laughs> so, I, huh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't send emails, you know? I wouldn't send I feel like I only send email. them for work. Yeah. I so, can't remember. Was there a specific reason they chose to do emails in the book? It... I, something to do with a private server. Mm, okay. Oh. All right. Maybe they and just I, didn't want to I only all remember that because there's at one point Alex in the book was talking about, like, I remember being warned about private servers and then continued the email, Henry, anyway. And I was like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else did we not like? Or I guess not, not that we didn't like. What else did we find blatantly different from the movie and the book? And cause us to dislike the movie more. There you um, go. <laughs> I'll say it. Say it super early here. <laughs> Tell us how you really feel, Ashley. <laughs> so I, um, Alex's parents were together in the movie, but they're divorced in the book. And it yep. changes the way that Henry and Alex bond. So I know, like, it wasn't really a thing for me, but I know other people found it. Um, a big turnoff. I did. Um, because there's like one of the first times that Alex kind of opens up to Henry was over a fight at Christmas because his parents were going at it again. And he had grown up with them constantly yelling at each other and he was tired of it. And then like in the movie, they're, they're, they're a happy, terrible Texan accent couple. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. That horrible accent. I hated their accents. It made me want to cry. (laughs) It was so bad. And it wasn't consistent. They didn't even have a consistent bad accent. But (laughs) and it it wasn't even a Texan accent. It was like a Southern Tennessee accent. (laughs) It was so so bad. But um, but yeah, but like to be fair, I also feel like the parents did not play as much of a role in the movie as they do in the book, and I would argue that it's still not a big role in the book either. But just the dynamic yes. of the lack of that or the change of that relationship just is going to change who Alex is as a person. Well, he became yeah. a single kid from a pretty politically powerful family versus, you know. Him and his sister. Him and his sister from a divorced family. I, can I we also? Can we also talk about the fact that they're coming from Austin, Texas? <laughs> With that accent? No, they ain't. <laughs> <laughs> they that sure was aren't. my. Uh, that's what made me remember right now because I was like, nobody from Austin has that accent. Nobody no. from Austin has an accent. And for like anyone who does not live in Texas, it. it Austin's just very different than the rest of Texas. Mm -hmm. Um, I think their whole, like, slogan over there is, keep Austin weird. Yep. And whereas, like, bigger cities like Dallas and Houston, they're they're very businessy. Yeah. So I, I... I feel like I just, I could have visioned it a little bit better if they were like, oh, they came from Dallas or, oh, they came from Houston. I feel like... If Austin. we can have a geriatric president, we could have a weird president. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I'm sorry. <laughs> old person. Yeah, like an old, like a really Oh. <laughs> In the book world, though. I think because she's a Democrat, it makes sense. That does. Mm, that yeah. does. I'm going to be honest. I feel like they picked Austin because Austin's, I feel like, always going to be blue. And... Dallas and Houston could change. I feel like Dallas and Houston have gone back and forth between blue and red. Um, so I think I, this last election was a, a real big, like, ooh, we almost. We did, which um, I found interesting because this book was published before that election. And we <laughs> actually had – now, it's never going to come down to Texas. For anybody who does not know how 
presidential elections work over here with the Electoral College. I'm not giving you a deep dive. What I am going to tell you is that it does go by time zones, and Texas is smack dab in the middle. So it's never going to come down to Texas because our voting polls are just going to be closed before when other people's are. Um, but it did get really close. Like there were a few times that we were sitting there. I remember because we had it up in my classroom when I was teaching. We were just watching the state's turn because it, it's, you know, it's live. We want to see what's going on. Yeah. And we were all watching it like it keeps bouncing back and forth. Like it was really close this last time. It was. Um, so I found that interesting that it kind of matched up. And I'm sure the author did not mean that to happen. But like it's kind of cool that it did. <laughs> yeah. It was. And let's even bring up why this is such an important part, like why we're even having this conversation, because Alex in the book was very into politics. He he was happy to be there. He he was present. He was active. He was doing all he can for, um, you know, like for the political world and, and wanting to do all that in the movie. It was touched upon and you see it and you understand it, how he loves all this. He's happy to be the president's son. And he, his whole thing in the movie was he wrote a Texas memo because he wanted to flip Texas. Mm -hmm. And that is why we're even talking about this to begin with, because it's actually a big part of the book and the movie, but well, more so in the book. The movie, he wants to flip Texas. In the book, he's keeping an eye on Texas because he knows that things need to change. But mm, one it, thing, and this this is a difference in that I personally didn't like, and I don't know how many other people really noticed it, but it's probably because I read the book and saw the movie so close together. Um, I did not like that the movie made Alex this playboy, do-whatever dude. Um, and in the book, we had... Alex in college and he's political and he wants a job and he's looking at his future and he's very like he's actually interacting with people and like talking to senators and talking to Congress. But I felt like in the movie he was coming across that as a brat. He was like, I'm the president's son. You should listen to me. And I was like, no, <laughs> that's not how that works. But in the book, that makes sense because he really did have those connections and people did listen to him, not because he was the president's son, but because he knew what he was talking about. And I don't feel like that was portrayed in the movie in the best way. I really feel like they sent him to Texas to shut him up. Because in the book, he actually goes around with the campaigning team to multiple states and, like, is legitimately involved and, like, starts as a lower level and, like, works his way up kind of thing. I don't like my rom-coms okay. that deep. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't think that much about it. Uh -oh. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> no, no, <you're> <laughs> I know that in the movie, it is brought up that I, I don't know if I would call him like a, a brat. The Playboy thing, I agree with. He he did have that vibe, that attitude towards him, um, which I actually didn't mind at all. Um, yeah, I, I get what you're it. saying, Katie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get what you're saying for sure. Um but I think at least in the movie aspect of it, I didn't mind. I, I Not that I liked it, but I actually kind of liked it. <laughs> um, in the movie, as far as like the political thing and him working towards that, if you were to just watch the movie alone, you can get an understanding how it was important to him. Probably not to the depth that they do in the movie. I mean, sorry, in the book. But... You get it. I feel like if you just watch the movie, you're going to get it. You're going to see how important it is to him, how much he loves it. And um, the only thing is in the movie, they did it, like, the big chunk of it all, they did it more in a montage way where mm -hmm. it, it, it you get, like, a solid, like, 20 seconds of it all with Henry and Alex talking in the background, texting, right, or emailing, whatever you want to believe it was in the movie and instead of music in the background it's them talking but it's a montage of it all of him going to texas getting voters i guess that's also a big difference is in the movie it was more let's get voters to register mm -hmm. to vote and then in the book it's like no let's do the nitty-gritty hard work to change politics yeah 
I would agree with that. I also, with your montage thing, this kind of comes back to something the three of us, I don't know if we said it in the podcast yet, but we have talked about, is that timing in a movie is so much harder to do than a book. Yeah. Because yes. this book takes place over a year, and they had to cram it into an hour and a half. And so, like, I get why they made it a montage in the book, though. Or in the movie, sorry. <laughs> I get. Why I feel they- like... A- I feel like uh, a lot of episodes we're going to have coming up in this <laughs> show is going to be a book, movie, wh- whichever one. <laughs> you know what we're talking about. It's fine. <laughs> um, I do know, however, Stephanie, that you want to talk about the museum scene. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. So the museum. Um, let's give, I'm going to do the movie. Okay. And then you can give the book because I got problems with the way that they did it in the movie. <laughs> so at, at towards the end of the movie, whenever there there's, um, is it an argument? I don't remember at this point. Is it an argument that they had and then they had to reconcile it's their breakup? <laughs> oh my God. That's okay. So, <laughs> so in the movie, Alex flies over to see Henry practically overnight which remind me to talk about that because that's absolutely ridiculous oh yeah the impossible times so in the in the movie alex flies over they need to kind of talk out their miscommunication there or whatever it was i don't even remember at this point because what i do remember is that in the middle of henry and alex going through an argument trying to like figure out their problem Henry Henry does this thing where he like in the middle of it in the heat of it all he's like pause there's somewhere I want to take you there's something I want to show you and he takes them to a museum in the middle of an argument and to me that was just so out of place you are not going to stop an argument be like hold it we got to go somewhere let's let's Clothe ourselves, get ready. Let's go take a drive. I, there's something I got to show you in the middle of the night. It's a museum right in the middle of an argument. No. That's, that's, it was so ridiculous. I'm like, no one's going to do that. And it, it just seemed so out of place. And so like, that's not the time and place. That, that, that is not the time and place to do that. See, I got a problem with that. Well, and it makes sense that you have a problem with that. Because in the book, it's not in the middle of the argument. It is after we have made up from the argument, if you get my drift. Yes, that makes <laughs> that much makes more, more sense. sense. Yeah. <laughs> like, hey, there's now we have a beautiful moment. We reconciled. We're mm-hmm. good. We're in love again. Let Now there's something I want to show you that's going to solidify my feelings towards you. Mm-hmm. Not in the middle of an argument. (laughs) (laughs) I would agree with that, though. I get that. Um, It did feel like whiplash in the movie a little bit. Because you're like, oh, okay, we're we're just over it now. Cool, cool, cool. You want to know what felt like whiplash? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All of the impossible times that they made it seem in the movie that Alex could just so easily fly to England. And any given notice, like, like, hey, I can be there in 10 minutes. <laughs> right. Is that, is that not how it seemed? It was like yeah, that no. in the book, too. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was? <laughs> it was like, oh, you have, you have an event on Saturday? Yeah, I'll totally be there. <laughs> <Was> yeah. like, <"Okay." laughs> well, no, even in the editing of the movie, it made it seem like he was there that night or mm-hmm. the next morning. Multiple times, it seemed yeah. like just... Multi- I, I, I think out of all the impossible things, I want to look it up now, but I feel like it's a minimum of a 12 hour trip. I could be very wrong to just making up numbers. Seven hours. Okay. Yeah, so seven Google hours. is saying seven hours from nonstop DC to London. Now, would they seven keep hours. the jet ready at all times? That's the real question. You know, cause that <laughs> takes a while to like set it up. Yeah, seven hours, and then you got to get security because okay, that's you what can't I was thinking. Convince me, there's one security guard going around with Alex, and that's it. <laughs> also, I'm assuming some sort of customs has to happen every single time before I, and after. I don't even know for a president's son. I don't know. Maybe Paul, because like 
what are they called? When when people go to like the foreign ambassadors, maybe there's different rules. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know nothing about that world to be talking on it. I'm yeah, 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 yeah. True. <laughs> neither neither of us do. Nobody. <laughs> if you do have that kind of access, uh, what are you doing listening to our little podcast here? <laughs> also, can you maybe explain it? <laughs> that would be fantastic. Thanks. And like also include us. I want to go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go visit. <laughs> oh, you know what was annoying was they had no queen. They didn't do the queen. They had a, the king instead. Yes. Uh, yes. And then they took out Henry's mom, which yes, we lost so much of that closure for him uh, that we got in the book. You know. Yeah, we've been talking about Alex a lot. Let's let's switch it up to Henry. <laughs> <laughs> so Henry's mom comes in at the end and is uh, def- like defending him. And is saying, I'm going to be there now. I'm so sorry I wasn't. Uh, Wait, hold on. Defending him because he was struggling with being a royal and being gay. Right. Yeah. So at the very end, when the queen is talking to him, um, there's no support there. Right. Right. And then uh, his mom comes and mediates the situation or whatever. I feel like we, for anybody who's listening to this and has not watched or read either, we should probably also throw in there, Henry's dad is not alive. He died from cancer. Um, and his mom checked out afterward. It wasn't just he was struggling with being gay and being a royal. It was he was struggling with the loss of his dad and his mom kind of pieced. And his sister, who also did not get good airtime, and we just lost her entire backstory... Right was a huge support for Henry. We didn't really bring her up. We didn't bring up her struggle. She was like the perfect little princess. And we, if you read the book, you know, she's not. Um, But I agree because of all of those things, his mom would have been huge closure that we should have kept in. And I can't help but wonder if we took her out because we didn't have the queen, maybe. Yeah, I, well, I don't no. feel like the part was needed for a basic rom-com, which I yes. feel like is what this movie got turned into. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's nothing super deep. It's very surface level. If you're going to look for um, just a basic fun time rom-com, that's what this is. There you go. I can agree with that. Yep. And uh, then and then they, t- <laughs> they took out, uh, there's no Raphael Luna. They totally yeah. changed the plot for that. <laughs> they showed it. Uh, I did not like that, dude. You didn't like Luna? Or no, you didn't like sorry. the media guy? No, 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 no. The, the, what's the reporter? Didn't like Miguel. Miguel. The reporter. That reporter. Him. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. We, we went from a legitimate political, like, reason to jealousy. Like, it <laughs> really... You know, you're right. If you're looking for a fun time rom-com, this is it. Because we kind of took out some of the juicier stuff. Yeah, there's no different actually... nuances. There's yeah. very surface level. Like, if you thought the book was surface level politics, the movie just <laughs> takes it even further away. We happen you know? to yeah. be at the White House. That's <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> um, one more thing I want to also bring up. Uh, just before I forget is, I guess for the parents that are listening, or or maybe this is just not your thing, I don't know, maybe as well, like, I just also want to bring up that there are, there, there's a reason why this movie is rated R, and I think at first glance, you don't see it, like, you, you're going to be like, why is this movie rated R? But then you're going to understand. <laughs> um, there are intimate scenes in this movie uh, and, and I just want it to, I just want people to be aware. There is, scene, there is a sex scene and there is also nudity in this movie. So I just kind of, I, I just want to put that out there so people are aware that is why this movie is rated R. That is why we don't suggest it to younger people yes the books have more descriptive intimacy scenes so just be aware as y'all are reading was there anything y'all did like that the movie did better 
I really liked uh, the cast that they picked. Yes. I loved I thought, the cast. Yeah, so um, Taylor and Nick had a really good chemistry, I thought, as Who's Alex Taylor and Nick? Alex and Prince Henry. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so Sorry. Taylor Perez is Alex, <laughs> and then uh, Nicholas, uh, I don't remember his last name. Um, Gala, yeah. And then, where's, uh, where's Alex from? Hold on. Where's that actor from? Because I know I've seen him before. I, where is he from? Oh my God. Alex? The Taylor Press? Uh, I don't know. Uh, the others have like a list. Like Nick was on the Amazon Cinderella. And Oh, that horrible adaptation of that, of the Cinderella story? Yes. Yes. Don't yeah. hold it against him. <laughs> no, he's not a prince. He got practice in. So. <laughs> he he built his resume. Mm-hmm. Um, he's from okay the the actor that plays Alex. That's why I recognize him. He's from the Kissing Booth. I don't know what that is. I know what it is, but I never watched it. He's from it's. He comes out in the second movie because there's three in total. The Kissing Booth is actually another movie adaptation of a book. Oh, and oh okay. Yeah, and it, it was on Netflix. Um, actually, it was really popular. I'm not. I'm surprised y'all hadn't watched it. But um, that's why I recognized him because I remember when I saw the news that he was going to be in Red, Ride and Warrior Blue. I was like, "Oh, that's the guy from the Kissing Booth." Huh. Nice. I also really liked. Uh, they had Uma Thurman. So mm-hmm. you know, even though she can't do oh, Texas love. accent. Miss Miss Poison Ivy herself. Mm. Love it. You know, as someone with red hair, I am so glad (laughs) that they included this, that they included her. Oh, you know what? And okay, uh, Zara. I really yes. liked her. I liked her in the book. I also really liked her character in the movie. I thought they um, kept she did a good job. Her book character, and I was yeah. here for it. Yes, I liked her a lot. They they used actual quotes from the book for her in the movie. Like they kept yeah. some of her best lines, which I really enjoyed. She yeah, was. Funny. I thought the humor and the banter in the book or in the movie was good. She mm-hmm. brought a lot of comedy to the movie. Mm-hmm. So, but like, I mean, overall, the movie. What it was very mid. It was very surface level. It was very, um, if it was a food, it's cotton candy esque, right? It's just it's just sugar. It's just sweet. There's I can no, see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just, it's just a fun good blue. Time. It's blue cotton candy. Blue cotton candy. Yes. <laughs> no fairy floss. It's blue fairy floss. Because <laughs> isn't that what they call it over there? I thought that was in Australia. Is it? I thought it. I thought it was lollies or something over in Australia. For cotton candy? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I'm not from Australia, Kay. <laughs> yeah, I was right. It's fairy floss. Fairy floss. Okay. I like that. That's very magical and whimsically. Yeah, but see, the the movie was not, so it's it's American, so cotton candy. It's cotton candy. <laughs> cotton candy. <laughs> Dang. I can't appreciate, so, like, the movie for what it is, um... What this would not have been made like ten years ago, this wouldn't have been oh, made. Oh no! Right? No. So you can't appreciate, even though it's not super in depth. Um, the fact that we're at this point now and as like a stepping stone to where we can continue on. Mm-hmm. I'm ready to throw down my personal ratings here. Do you want to kick us off then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. So the book, um, I rated a five out of five. Uh, including for narration if anybody's gonna do an audiobook version i really like mm-hmm. that and then for the movie i did a three out of five because it's mid <laughs> do, you, do you hear the silence <laughs> go on katie tell me <laughs> what you i'm dang I'm, I'm gonna be that person aren't i i'm so sorry i think in this whole show you're gonna be that person <laughs> It's because, so listen, sorry. it's because you over, well, I don't say overanalyze. You just analyze very deeply into things. And I'm, I'm a very surface level person. That's, that's that and I'm a very dramatic person. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it takes a lot for me to rate a book five out of five. And I don't mean that in a mean way. It's not, it's, it's just, 
First of all, I will say this podcast is going to get me to branch out of my comfort zone, and I'm here for it because I need that. I need the push to read things that I would typically not read, and this is a book I would typically not read because I'm a slow burn girl, and that's not it. (laughs) (laughs) That's not it. Um, For me, the book was a three out of five. Like, I get the hype. I get why everybody loved it. There was just a lot of issues I personally had. People can go read my Goodreads. I'm honest on there about why why I felt the way I felt. And it probably is another, you're overanalyzing a rom-com, and I'm sorry. Um, but for me, the movie was a 2 out of 5, because it just, like, the book was better. Whoa. All right, Stephanie, what do you think? So, I'm going to start off with, I did not finish the book. So, I cannot give it a full rating just yet. Um... So I'll I'll reserve that for later. But the movie, I'm going to give it a three out of five. I just feel like this is not a movie I would watch again. It's cute, and I'm happy to have watched it once. Um, I even saw it twice in preparation for the episode, but I would not have watched it again just for fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That. So um, that was Red, White, and Royal Blue. I Does anybody want to introduce the next book that we're going to be talking about? I will, because I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited about this one. Go so for the it. next episode that we are going to do is over Coraline. Um, the book is by Neil Gaiman, if anybody would like to read and follow along with us. And it is a very, I feel like, classic Halloween-y movie that most people have seen before so i'm excited to see the differences i've never read the book have you all read the book no no i haven't no i i started it to be prepared for the next episode so i am excited to talk about it and i love the movie love it love it i'm super excited y'all have to do a deep dive um on all the theories and like the work that we <gasps> every I, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make a whole PDF for it because I am <laughs> so excited. I'm so excited. It'll be very interesting too because I think all three of us have seen the movie before reading the book this time. Yeah, yeah. Normally yes. I don't watch a movie unless I've read the book. So mm-hmm. yeah. So I think that's gonna pull in an interesting perspective from all of us because we have such a fondness over the movie. Mm-hmm. I'm very curious if and how. They differentiate, so. Mm-hmm. Keep in mind, it's also a middle grade book, is it? Or is it a children's book? I think it's, it's a middle, middle grade. grade. Yeah, middle, middle grade, okay. It's a middle grade book. So yeah. ho- we're, we're hoping that with this podcast, we're going to go through different um, mm-hmm. in all levels yeah, different of. different genres, different levels of reading. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And so we're very excited to start or to continue on with Coraline for episode two And we hope everybody tunes in very soon to listen along with us. Um, And then also, um, in the meantime, you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at Pause the Page. Yes.